The setup for this vitrectomy is 25 gauge um, Alcon constellation with a synergetics chandelier light. Please note the dense vitreous hemorrhage with old white blood. Here you see that the retina is attached and that the posterior hyaloid is um, partially detached, partially attached. I'm inducing now a posterior vitreous detachment. And removing uh, the old hemorrhage. This is um, three to four weeks after perforation. Here, here is the metal foreign body at the nasal pole. Please note also the uh, residual. Uh, subretinal choroidal hemorrhage. Here is still some attached posterior hyaloid which I'm trying to remove. This is a 25 gauge vitreous cutter. So now we come to this intraocular foreign body. You can see that uh, the, mo the biggest part is um, subretinal. So I'm injecting perfluorocarbon to protect the posterior pole. Uh, now I'm using an Atkinson cannula, a very cheap cannula, to open up um, the tissue above the metal foreign body. It could be an alternative to leave the foreign body at place, but as we know that uh, metal causes uh, toxic retinal damage after a long time. So I continue to remove it. Now I'm using an Atkinson cannula and a forceps. Here you see the metal foreign body. It's very deep inside the tissue and I'm trying to tr extract the foreign body with an Eckert forceps. And as you can see, I am not succeeding. Please note also this necrotic tissue coming out of the wound. Now I'm using two forceps to remove this big foreign body which is firmly attached inside the tissue. But even with two forceps, I do not succeed removing uh, the foreign body. So I try again with um, forceps and Atkinson cannula. Um, to get it out from the side, but I can tell you now, I will not succeed. 
I'm only inducing a focal retinal detachment. So a limbal peritomy on the opposite side. This has to be done in any case because the foreign body is far too big for the um, trochars. So you have to measure with uh, the right distance uh, 4 mm behind the limbus using a V lens from Alcon. I remove some interior vitreous which is which is located behind the sclerotomy. Now comes the twenty gauge foreign body forceps and a second Eckert forceps which is uh, actually not necessary because I can remove it now actually quite easily. Mm. I will try to relocate the foreign body for easier removal. Now I lost it. So that was a bad idea. Now I have to um, get it back and it is not so easy. So I'm happy that I protected the macula with perflo carbone. You can even see the uh, effect on the retinal tissue. So now I have it, and I think I will not do something more. Simply try to remove it in one go. I'm flicking out the biome, and I hope to extract it now in one movement. I'm trying to hold the wound the sclerotomy open with a um, to enlarge it with a V lens from Alcon to have more space. And I'm holding the wound open with a surgical forceps but unfortunately it got stuck inside the sclerotomy so I have to try to remove it from this position using two surgical forceps I'm using again this Atkinson cannula to come behind, trying to come behind the uh, foreign body and push it outside. But uh, I have uh, no success. So I'm enlarging the sclerotomy with the uh, V lens.
this is the VLANs and I'm enlarging the scrotomy. Um, but the foreign body does not want does not want to leave the eye. I'm using again the Atkinson cannula to come behind the foreign body, but no success. So I use again forceps with teeth, surgical forceps. And again no success. So I try once more with the um, foreign body forceps, 20 gauge. And again, this is my savior, the foreign body forceps. The foreign body is removed. So now we can close the sclerotomy. I'm using um, Vicryl 8O cross sutures to close this sclerotomy. And now we have to take care of the uh, impact side on the retina. I remove first some Entier vitreous with uh, blood cells. Okay, so now this is the impact site. Here's a slight hemorrhage. But you can see that there is no fresh blood coming from this big wound. And the reason for this is that I waited three to four weeks for the surgery to prevent hemorrhaging and to prevent post-operative scarring and post-operative PVR detachment. So it's time to remove the perfluor carbone. It's not needed anymore. Now comes laser photocoagulation and I think you can see that I'm doing a big circle because the tissue inside the circle is detached. There's a focal detachment in this area. So I'm trying to push the tissue back into the wound, continuing with a fluid against air exchange. And aspirating subretinal fluid from this focal detachment. I will only use a gas tamponade here, no silicone oil. There is no silicone oil necessary in a delayed vitrectomy. <coughs> because I removed most of the subintel fluid, so laser is now possible, co possible because the subintel fluid is removed. And there will be a C2F6 tamponade. And this is the final uh, touch. Now we come to the three weeks follow up. Visual acuity is 0 0.9. The patient is very happy. And here's an optos picture with the residual little gas bubble. 
a very nice scar tissue on the impact side. 